Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of Around the Game. I am your host, Vinny Jura, and tonight we are blessed with the presence of Ateng Emmanuel. You're so welcome. Thank you, Vinny, and it's very good to be here. Okay, I'm glad that you guys gave me an opportunity to come on the show. Okay, so AT, you've been, you are the uh, MVP Division 3, you've played with Warriors, played with Falcons, played with JKL, and now you're playing with Warriors, uh, Falcons once again. Yeah. T tell us why you began playing basketball. How, how and why did you begin playing basketball? Well, um, I began playing basketball as a kid. I remember we used to stay on Buganda Road. That's just next to YMC. So I had a brother of mine he was playing in power. Okay, he used to play with the power guys. And every time he would come home, he had this thing of, you know what, he would collect all of us. Then, you know, take us one on one, one on two. And that's always beating us, yeah? And in my mind, I'm like, you know what? I want to be better than this guy. You know, I want other time to come when I can take him one on one and I'd be better than him. So he had a basketball at home and I used to steal the ball sometimes, dribble around here and there, but I wasn't getting good. All right. See, till about my P7 back, I remember on the day we finished exams, we stole the ball as a group and ran to the YMCA, you know. Had a lot of fun. We found, I remember there was a guy called Eddie. He used to play in Kitante. And I think Miracle. Okay. Yeah. So Eddie was there every day working out, working out. And on that day, we, I saw Eddie working out, you know. And I was like, you know what? Now I want to be like this guy. All right. So I remember Eddie, one day I went for practice in the morning. And Eddie told me, please rebound for me. All right. And I was rebounding for him. And after, after his shooting drill, he's like, you know what? I think you'll be a good player one day. And that really motivated me. So after some time, we moved from Buganda Road and went to Kubi, that is near Makari University. And that's when I discovered that there's a court inside the university, pool court. Yeah. All right, so we used to walk there to play, but you know when you're young and you find older guys, it's always this thing of you have to play before they come. Yeah. Okay. As soon as they come, they chase you kids off. All right. So it was, we can't play, they chase us off. But we got the opportunity to watch guys like Piero, who used to play in Elungat. Yeah. Used to play in uh, Falcons. I think Samo Ball used to come. Ikong Joseph. And just seeing these guys and seeing how good basketball was, I really got motivated to play. So slowly by slowly, started picking up. Started watching tapes of Michael Jordan, you know, Magic Johnson. Those days when we had video decks. Yeah, and um, I picked up really well to a point whereby on pool court they were not chasing me anymore. They were saying, let that kid come and do it and play with us. Yeah. All right. And after a while, yeah, we became the guys of pool court. The big we became the big dogs of pool court. If I can take you back to your history, you say that you used to stay around Buganda Road uh, yeah. near YMCA. How was YMCA like, if you can describe it? Uh, YMCA was crazy. On game day, you wouldn't get space to sit. I remember one time, I think it was a final. I think Falcons Warriors. It was so packed, yeah, that I think they had to put a TV outside for us to watch. Yeah, you couldn't get space. And these days at a final, right, there are very many guys. Guys feel to go, but it's not like way back when I was a kid. All right, it was more crazy back then. YMCA was always packed. Not like now. Now it's, it's they are there. It's moderate. So uh, tell us about your basketball history in terms of the clubs you played for, the high school you went to. Yeah. Um, I went to Kitante Hill School. All right. And I can say I was fortunate and unfortunate at the same time. Fortunate because um, I remember watching guys like Hamza. All right. Um, they were they were very good guys. There was a team that uh, they they gave them a scholarship. Guys from Kenya. The Hamza's group, and we're always watching these guys. These guys are basketball, you know. We always thought of these guys like, you know, man, these guys are NBA class players, all right. So being in Kitande, we had the opportunity to learn a lot from these guys, yeah. But the unfortunate part was to get onto that Kitante team was impossible, all right. You wouldn't get onto that team because our skill level wasn't their skill level, and by that time we we're just learning how to play. I remember the only time I actually ever played was in an under 16. The coach called me up and said, you know what, I think you're improving. Come on, play. Right? But I didn't play. I was on the bench the whole tournament. But just, you know, the happiness of actually being on the bench. Yeah? 
then uh, after my O level, A level, my dad took me to a school where there was no basketball because parents have this thing that basketball and books don't really go together. Yeah. So I had like a dry spell for two years. Then in my vacation, yeah, I was playing on pool court one day and uh, the Livingstone guys watched me play, uh, Pasco actually. I was like, you know what, I think you should come and try out for our team. And I did. And by that time, Livingstone was still in the first division. Right? But I think that was the time the team was going down. So I played my first uh, game in the, the NBL, let's say, of that time. Now. But we were relegated down and most of the big players left. Yeah, so it left us as a small team. So Livingstone was my first club. And I played a year before we got relegated again to the third division. But uh, that's when, you know, I got tested. At some point, I was like, man, I came from up, went there, then went even further down. You know, and at that time, I almost stopped playing basketball, but I was like, you know what, let me at least take the team back where I won. And that's when I won an MVP, you know, in the third division. After that, um, Samo Ball, you know, saw Sam talent in me, and by that time, they let John Simba. So Sam told Simba that there's this kid who's really good, you should check him out. And that's how Falcons <coughs> pulled me up. Yeah, but getting on two Falcons, again, it was a star-studded team. It was full of stars, all right? The Osanos, the Mike Bazangos, the Bienvenus, Sudi. Sudi Ulanga, all these guys, okay? But for me to just be on that team, to be on paper and say, you know what, I play for Falcons, for me it was like a highlight for me, you know, because I got the opportunity to watch these guys and play against them, you know, learn from them in practice. Yeah, and after a while, I think Falcons had some issues. All right, so I remember we were playing a playoff against uh, against Power. All right, so some of the players left. Okay. You, they left during the series. Yeah, they left during the playoffs. Oh my God. Okay. And now the team was left to us. So I remember that. That was actually the first game that I started. The know? whole season. Yeah, and I, I was scared. I remember no, no man dunked on me. Right? <laughs> In the first quarter, no man dunked on me. And I was confused. I was like, man, this is what it is. Who was coaching this year? By that time, who was? I don't remember who the coach. It was a Kenyan coach, I think. Yeah, okay. there was a Kenyan coach. So no man dunked on me, and I'm like, you know what? I'm here. I have to play. And I remember that was the game that I had one of the biggest highlights of my lifetime. All right? Um, I dunked, I think, on the whole power team. Right? Crossover, and boom! Next day, everyone was like, man, E.T., that dunk. And I think that's where I got the name Flight 13. After that, um, after I played for Falcons, I got a scholarship to go play in India, and I was there for a while. Then I came back in 2018. I joined Warriors, and playing for Warriors was really good because there are certain teams in my mind that I always wanted to play for Falcons, you know, Warriors, and just being called to play for the Warriors was a good thing. Um, but the thing is that by that time I had some issues. Right? I had some family issues. My dad was sick. And I just come back from India, so I wasn't really much focused on basketball. You know, my loyalties were a bit stretched. Yeah. And the season wasn't so good. I had a couple of injuries and all that, so I didn't get to play much. Yeah. And after that, I was released, joined JKL. JKL was also a very good experience of being coached by Samu Ball. Then after that, I don't know what happened. The coaching staff changed. Yeah. And, uh, but it was a good experience. I got to learn from, you know, the best coaches, Samo Ball, then uh, Henry Malinga. And uh, after that, after the 2019 season, I decided that I should go back to Falcon. I should go back home, okay. right? Because that is where, for me, most of the stuff happened. So right now, if Corona hadn't jumped into our way, I'd actually be playing for Falcons in the league. Yeah. Let me take you back to your history or uh, Falcons. Yeah. What was it like in Falcons compared to today? I don't know. You've not been part of the Falcons team uh, for about 11 years now. Mm. So I'm sure you've been following it. I yeah. think that is what, like your home. Yeah, you've just... been following what's going on in the team. I'm yeah. sure it has a lot of problems. Because uh, those days, uh, John team were rest in peace. Mm. Was the father of basketball in Uganda. And Falcons was very dominant mm. all over East Africa. Yeah. But all of a sudden, Falcons is fighting relegations in and out every season. So yeah. what do you think is the problem with the Falcons team currently? I think currently it, 
uh, okay, let me start from way back then. Back then, management is very important to any team, all right? And uh, Simba was a very good leader, all right? He had a thing of he could keep a team together, okay? He could motivate and convince people to play together. And I think that's why when he was there, the team was actually flourishing, six championships, okay? But after Simba passed away, I think that's when stuff with Falcons really started to get unstable because the management and the players were not on the same page. Right? Because you had players complaining about um, financial issues and to realize most of these players, half of the team wasn't even Ugandan. All right? Half of the team were international players. And if you bring international players, you really have to pay them because for them, that is their job. Okay, They have come to work. All right. So if you're not paying those guys, they also won't work. All right. So that is why I think at that point in the playoffs, those guys left. All right. So the management and the players were not on the same page. Uh, so one by one, players started leaving. One by one, players started leaving. And by that time, that's also when I went to India. All right. Now, I was so surprised to hear that Falcons had gotten relegated. I was like six time champion getting Jose, were you really surprised knowing their problems? I was surprised, all right? Because let's 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 imagine, okay? The six time Chicago Bulls getting relegated. Right? getting relegated. Okay, you're like, how does it even happen? Yeah. Even if they have the weakest team, it should not happen. Yeah. All right. So I was really surprised that the team was relegated. Okay, and in my mind I was thinking why what happened even if the management wasn't that good they should have at least been able to maintain the team in the nbl okay but the thing is i think all teams go through a phase whereby you have to rebuild it's inevitable yeah. okay and from my perspective i think it's a good thing that happened to falcons it showed all the holes that were in the team okay all the problems that the team had okay so when they got relegated it was time for them to rebuild. And I think right now we are trying to rebuild. All right. And last season we maintained in the NBL. And if we had played this season, I believe that we would have maintained. But I think um, we still need to step up in recruiting players. All right. Because I think it has reached a point whereby when you call a player to your team, he's going to ask, but who is on that team? <laughs> who am I going to play with? Yeah. Okay. So you need good players to attract good players and the players and Falcons now are very good players so for us right now I think it's more about we have to build so much for us to attract more talent all right so it's in a good and bad place depending on how we use it bad place if we decide that you know what we're not that good the team is going to sink if we decide and get motivated to play I believe that we can still raise the team back to where it was Okay, speaking of Falcons, once again, uh, this is a six-time champion. I mean, it's one of the most uh, decorated teams in East Africa. Yeah. So I, I believe many players have gone through Falcons, like yeah. superstars. I can talk about Stephen Ball, yeah. Pierrot, mm. there's Alenia Walls, uh, just to mention a few. Luke yeah. actually played with Falcons. Yeah, he did. Yeah, so are the senior players, not even senior players, the old veteran players, are yeah. they doing anything to support the team? Um, right now, not that I know of. Yeah, because when I came back to Uganda in 2018, I really haven't heard anything about uh, the senior players coming back to help the team. And I think that's a very important as aspect, actually. I think the older guys should be more involved in what's happening with the team right now. Yeah, yeah but I, I don't know if they had a problem with management and decided to cut ties or no, something I believe, like that. I believe John Simba treated them properly. Yeah, so he did. Him. Yeah, he did treat them properly. And I think that is something that they should look into. Because yeah. if the team is going down, it's also their name going down. Mm -hmm. That is like sinking their six championships. Okay? Think about your, your high school getting demolished. So yeah. you don't have a high school to take true. those kids to. Yeah, that's very so I think true. Falcon is something like that. Yeah, they should actually come and defend. I think uh, one of the people who was really supporting Falcons was Samu Ball. Because he coached the team for a while. you know, And uh, he really maintained you know, the status of the team. But when he finally left... I think that was another blow to Falcons. You know, the coaching also kind of went down. So I think those old players should come back and actually 
I don't know, create a board or something, you know, yeah. Falcons board, yeah. and try to make sure that you know what, we don't stop at six championships. Try to raise the team back to eight. I was talking to the manager of Falcons. Uh, that's Douglas, and yeah. he, he told me Falcons has the most loyal fans when it comes to basketball in Uganda. Yeah. So I think management really has to step up if you want to see Falcons go. Anyway. Yeah, they, they do. Because if you have the support from the fans, wow. seeing out like veteran, veteran players, players, there's yeah. no way you can fail. Yeah, you can't fail. Uh, I think with sports, you can't really focus on only the team. Okay, Sports, you have the team itself as an entity. Then you have the fans. You have your sponsors. You have the players who went through the team before that. So... When you put all these things together, all these elements, yeah, I think you can have a very successful team. I think that is why City Oil is actually thriving right now. Power. Yeah, so I think that's something that the Falcons, we should also look into, you know, try to put all these things together. Yeah. Okay, speaking uh, about your basketball, once again, you say that after Falcons, your first team, yeah. you went to India. How was basketball in India? <laughs> I went to India in 2011. Okay. All right, and... The game was like totally different. Eh? Me learning how to play basketball, I thought, you know what? Go to the hoop and go hard. If you want to dunk on a guy, go dunk on a guy. All right? But when we went to India, the game was totally different. All right? The, they play a more settled game, a more calm game. I remember the first time we went to play a tournament, there was no crowd, you know? And in Uganda, we are used to, you know, the crowd, one guy is abusing you here, one guy is motivating you on the other side. But when we went to India, first of all, it was a very quiet game, okay? They, they use a lot of set plays, all right? They use more of a European kind of uh, play, and most of them are shooters. Even the weakest guy on the bench will step on court and torch you. <laughs> All right. A guy you look at and you're like, ah, this, guy, this guy can't do nothing. Guy will come and shoot. All right. So they depend so much on basic basketball, all right, and shooting. Because they're not that physically strong, but you know they'll bump guys here and there, no. So it's mostly, you know, up there. And um, when we went there, it was a tough experience for us because fine, here we used to shoot. But when we reached there we realized that you know what? They are actually shooters out there. So we had to change our games. All right. I remember we had to go through practices of actually we just shoot the basketball. All right. And it, it helped us grow the guys who were there. All right. It brought a new dimension to our game. All right. We, we realized that you don't have to go knocking everyone in your way to get to the basket. No. Play smart. Okay. Use set plays. All right. Which I think is another thing that in Uganda we haven't really grasped. Because you'll go draw a set for a team and say, you know, let's run things this way. But who in Uganda ever runs a play to the end? All right? No one. Okay. Yeah. But there you have to run the play, how the coach has set it out for you. All right. So we had to change the way we play. Okay. And it was a hard thing because we had already developed the habit that Uganda had put in us. Intensity basketball. Yes. And now to relearn how to play <laughs> to basketball. Unlearn. To, to unlearn intensity. All right. And try to learn a style that is not as intense. Yeah. Because sometimes you drive and you're expecting to knock a guy, but someone is avoiding. Layoff is so easy and you're wondering, man, what happened? You know, what yeah. happened here? So yeah, we had to change that a lot about our game, which I think is a very good thing because, I mean, now if you look at guys like Chizito Caesar, the future, yeah. Kiddy Mark, those guys will actually step outside the three-point and touch you, all right? Their game totally changed. And I think that's um, another thing that we as Uganda need to look into. We need to get our players more exposed to the different styles of play out there. Yeah. Okay. So after India, you came back to the Warriors. Yeah. And I remember in that season, that was about 2019. It was 2018. 18. Yeah. I believe that season, Warriors had one of the best teams in the country. Yeah. All positions you guys are blessed. We but did. you came up short against a GKL team that was still trying to beat them. What was the Yeah, problem? basketball is a weird thing. All right, you can have the best team ever. Sometimes you have to look at the best team on paper and the best team on the basketball court. All right, but we had actually a very good team, as you said. It. Each position was filled and there was a substitute for each position. All right, but 
I think that uh, we went through the whole season trying to put the team as one. You know, when a team is not synced together, there are always going to be problems. All right. So the team really wasn't synced together. All right. In the way we were playing, you know, in the way we were dealing with the management. All right. And sometimes that really put the team off. Okay. So we actually had the idea that, you know, for that year, we were going to win the league. You know, that, that trophy was ours. And we played through the season. It was a good season. And, you know, come to the playoffs, we thought, okay, you know what, we have JKL. It's not going to be easy, but I think, you know what, we can win this. All right? And I think JKL came prepared. Okay? okay. Because the person who was coaching JKL was someone who had coached Warriors before. Sam Obol. Yeah. Okay? And Obol is a very intelligent coach. So I think he scoped out exactly what he wanted to do with the Warriors. And I think for the playoffs, we played right into his plan. All right? We played right into his plan. And at the end of the day, we came short. Because for the playoffs, it's not like, you know, the regular season, win one, lose one, you know. You catch up in best of three. Every game you lose is a big problem. All right? So... I think in the last game, kind of, you know, the morale kind of went down and we ended up succumbing to a JKL team that was really good, led by Brian Namake, a very excellent player. Yeah, so he led them and that's what happened with Warriors. Okay, now let me get to 80 the coach. <laughs> Why did you begin coaching basketball? What inspired you? Um, the time I was at McCary on campus, yeah. Um, there was, there are two girls teams. In Macari, there was Macari Sparks and Macari Cubs. The Cubs was the the younger team, okay? And I remember Sparks at that time was uh, in the league. They, I think they actually won a league title in 2003 or something like that. Yeah, so when I went to campus, there were very many good players, but there were not enough coaches, okay? And at that time, Samba Ball was the one coaching the girls team and the boys team. So he was coaching us also. All right, and I used to watch Sam do his thing and you know coach, and I'm like, you know what? I think this game that I've learned, I should, you know what, push it onto someone else. Okay, so I decided to become like an intern to Sam Obol. All right, watch what he's doing, ask him questions, try and learn from him. And um, there's a time he couldn't coach the Cubs team anymore, so I was just thrown into coaching. No experience, you know, no certificate, no nothing. I was like, let me go with what I know in my head and try and coach these girls. Yeah? And it was it was a very hard thing because I was used to dealing with guys. Playing with guys is, you know, easy. But now coaching girls, and the funny thing was that I was coaching girls uh, who are at the same age as me, who are all on campus, all right? Yeah. And coaching them was really complicated, but I took my time. And decided that you know what let me learn this game and let me see how best i can teach others all right so i went through hard times the girls would lose games and you know they'll get so emotional i'd go to games where you know what you look at the, the coaching staff the other side they have like three coaches and you're the only one and all those guys have certificates and it's hard but i think that that really taught me what being a coach is and taught me more about the game all right, so that's when I made it in my mind. I was like, you know what? I think I should do this. I think I should coach basketball. Yeah. So after I left Uganda and went to India, uh, the university were playing at Garden City College. We had no basketball coach. It was literally us. You know, everyone would take a turn and, you know, uh, run the sessions. But there was no girls coach. So I was like, you know what? I have some experience coaching girls, so why not? So I started because uh, we didn't. Uh, we went with a couple of girls, Lin, Nalunkuma Lin. Yeah. Uh, then there was Hilda and uh, Juanito. You know, very good girls. So I was like, you know what? Let me take up the mantle and actually work with these girls. So I worked with them when they left. I worked with a couple of Indian girls, and all this time, you know, I was just learning. I was just learning, trying to make myself better. So when I came back to Uganda uh, in 2018, I didn't coach for that whole year. But one day, Samo Ball calls me and he says, uh, there's this team called Angels. They're looking for an assistant coach. 
and I was, I was, I really wasn't into coaching at that time because you know I just come back, then the issues with the family and whatnot. But I was like, you know what? Let me go to the training session and check it out. So when I went there, I found Tony Drilleva, my boss, Tony Drilleva. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, your boss? He's the head coach. I'm the assistant <laughs> coach. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, Tony's a very sharp guy. His basketball IQ is actually very high. Right. So I'm like, if these girls actually work in my team then this could be a very good thing you know i should get back into coaching so i watched a couple of sessions you know saw the players that they had and you know I, I liked what they were doing because for them it wasn't only about basketball you know they were trying to push it out of basketball you know they have a hashtag that we beyond the game all right so they're going beyond the game uh pulling in kids and you know going for outreaches and i'm like you know this is something i want to you know be about so i decided to join the angels in 2019 and yeah, it's, uh, it's been really a good experience for me, just working with them, you know, growing with them, seeing how, you know, the different players, are, you know, coming up, you know, getting the young players into it. And it's been a good thing. And of recent, I was put in charge of uh, the grassroots program. So we decided that we should start a program whereby we raise kids from when they're young. Okay, so we partnered with uh, a school in Chihuly, that's a police children's school. So what we did, um, we got like 15 girls and decided that, you know what, we should develop these girls, all right? The team is called Dubs. So we have three levels. There's the under 14, then we have the 16 and under, then we have the senior team. So we want to create a, a process whereby they move to each level, which also helps the senior team in continuity. Because if we have a, an angel system that starts from the grassroots, it helps still. Yeah, yeah so... I'm now the coach, the head coach for the grassroots program. And before Corona happened, uh, we were actually going for a tournament that was uh, arranged by the French school. But then, yeah, Corona came and stopped everything. But I believe that as soon as uh, sports is open, we'll still go back to the same program because uh, it's it's a program that, you know, looks into the future. All right. So we realized that the game of basketball is not as good as you know way back especially for the girls we don't want there to be a very big gap between the teams now and the ones coming up so the best way to tackle those problems is actually to start from down all right so that's what we decided to do as a okay team. speaking about angel one in uganda basketball is when a team gets uh, promoted to the top division yeah one season and they're back down mm. angels have been successful yeah so What's the secret? Yeah, I'll, I'll first tell you what the problem is with most teams that come up. So the thing is, uh, for the ladies, um, most teams in the second division, all right, you have to realize that the top division teams are always scouting players, okay? Yeah. So whenever these teams come up, their best players have already been scouted. So, you know, they pick out the crop of the team, the best players. So you come up but which players are you going to have because now you can't really attract more talent or talent that is as good as the the, the other teams in the in the nbl so most of them go back down because when they come their players are taken into the bigger team so they can't really compete yeah. so it's more of come up go down come up go down right but for angels um we try to keep the core of the team there all right and for most for most teams most people actually want to look for opportunity. It's more about where am I getting paid, you know? If KCC is signing me, how much are they paying me versus how much is this team paying me right now, all right? But for angels, it's more than just being paid, okay? It's like a family. We have a goal and we have to reach this goal, all right? Whether there is money, whether there is no money, this is what we have set out to do and that is what we're going to do, all right? So we kept the core of the team. All right, you have players like Kathy, you have players like Miriam, and those are very experienced players who actually pass down their knowledge to the rest. All right, so we kept the core of the team, and um, fine, we have lost a couple of players here and there, but you know, they're not really big blows to the team. All right, so we have kept them together as a team. We have a goal, I believe that us as a coaching staff, the goal obviously is to win, you know, uh, the NBL. But there, there are other small goals that you have to tackle along the way. All right, so we believe a lot in player development. And 
any person who has passed through angels can tell them by the time they leave angels they're actually a better player than they were okay so i think uh we we attract talent in that way all right now we have players like akulu melissa who's one of the best in the league right now all right we have other upcoming players and players that you know we are raising right now so we have kept a very close-knit team and um the players who are there now appreciate what we are doing all right so we are all focused and we have put it in our mind that you know what every step we take we're not going backward because we've been progressing slowly by slowly and if you look at us now we are so close to the top four teams okay and i believe that once we get into the top four there's also no what no going back all right so the coaching staff and the management have a plan that we follow each player that we sign each player that we develop has a purpose we just don't take players you know just for taking everything has a purpose in what we do yeah so i think that is why we've been able to maintain ourselves at that you know high level in the nba okay dealing with girls is crazy i don't know if you know what i mean very crazy and being a girls <laughs> coach how do you go along with it well um i know that some of the players are going to watch this and i'd just like to tell them dealing with you girls is very hard all right dealing with it's like having a little sister all right and for your little sister you have to be like a father you have to be like a brother you have to be the protector you have to be literally everything with guys we are less emotional if i'm playing with you vinny i'll say you know what vinny this is what we need to do if you did something wrong i'll say it to your face and you know it's done we have dealt with it you know but with girls no it's not from a to b no you might go a to z z back to c you know it's really complicated and one of the things that i've found really challenging to deal with is the emotions sometimes dealing with the emotions is harder than dealing with the game of basketball itself of course all right because you will have a training session whereby the girls come and someone's mood is off and then the mood becomes contagious so the whole training session is just it's gone like that yeah. all right you're trying to run at you know you're trying to run something new you're trying to run new sets but because one person doesn't get it emotions kick in all right then you have the whole thing i don't know what's what, what it is with girls but girls have these things of grouping together you have that group you have this group you know because of similar things or this one doesn't like that one and these are all things that you have to deal with before you actually deal with the game itself yeah. all right so i've had times whereby you know i have to be a counselor because someone is going into a game but something happened at practice yesterday and you know their mind is off and as a coach you want to win you have yeah, to get yeah. their mind back in the game yeah. so you have to sit with someone and talk to them you know then there are times whereby uh, players are not you know sinking together because ah last game this one didn't pass me the ball so you know what i'm not going to pass this one the ball emotional things yeah. okay but i think in all that um it strengthens you not only as a coach but as a person i remember when we were going through the fiba coaches certification uh, the guy who was taking us to he say he coached uh, the mozambique team the girls team all right so I walked up to him one day because I also had the same question how do you handle girls you know because it's like every day is a new problem you know so I went and asked him I was like you know how did you handle the girls team there he's like you know what I had set rules and they all had to follow these rules yeah. okay if you didn't follow those rules you're out of the team okay but you have to realize that all teams are different all right you can't have the same rules that someone applies in their team applying in your team okay so i have a couple of things that i do all right i try to understand each player as they are all right trying to understand someone as a group is really not a good thing so i try to understand each player as they are i try to treat them the way they want to be treated okay because i believe that understanding someone goes a long way in helping them Uh, to achieve something right apart from that when it comes down to the game like i said we have a very uh, we have a very good team very good players even those uh, who are still learning the game are very good and there are girls who really 
follow instruction. Okay. If you tell them I need you to do things this way, they will try their best. Yeah. And when it's not working, we as the coaching staff will try to find a way to uh, make it workable for them. All right. So it's 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 a good experience. I've learned a lot. I believe they've also learned a lot from us. And um, actually now feel more comfortable coaching a girls team. Than a boys team. I've, I've not coached a boys team. <laughs> till 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 that I think I tried to coach Livingstone last year, but I was so busy with practice with the girls team. Yeah. So I used to go once in a while because again Livingstone, you know, went down and I felt as one of the guys who played in the team I should go okay. back and help them. Yeah. yeah. So I find it's actually easier when you and when okay, you can't really understand girls. <laughs> But when you try to understand girls, it makes your job yeah, easier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's 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 been a hard experience, but it gets easier by the day. Because now with the players, I'm actually friends with most of with all the players. You know, I know how to talk to them. I can read most of them. I can know when they are angry, I can know when they are happy. So for me knowing all these things helps me I coach them better. I know if this person is pissed off during a game, I know exactly what you know we should do for this person. If this person is having a good game, I know there are certain things you shouldn't do to this person because that will switch them yeah. off, you know. So understanding all those things has really helped not only me, but the whole coaching staff at Angels to, you know, work with girls. Okay. Yeah. So well, what is Angels plan in the next five, uh, five to ten years? Well, um, it's a big plan, but like any other team that competes, we want to win. Okay, we want to be at the top of the NBA, and uh, I think everything that we're doing right now is really pushing us towards that goal. All right, so it might not even be in five years. Five years is a long time. Okay, yeah. let's say in five years we should have stepped ourselves up there, and we should be defending, you know, our place at the top. Okay, so I think within two to three years we should be able to be at the top there All right we have already crossed you know from down uh we've crossed now we are i think the fifth all right and we're just moving up from there so everything we're doing right now be it in recruitment be it in player development be it in scouting all right the big goal is to actually win the nbl all right um, the other plans that we have like i said we have the grassroots program Okay, so we don't want angels to be like a team that was there then 10 years after you don't hear about the team. The teams like we had ladybugs back in the day when I was, when I was a kid, yeah. very good team, had very good players. You know, I used to look up to those ladies when I was growing up, but somehow the team disappeared. And you know, you don't want such a thing happening, you want continuity. So, one of the other plans is that we started that grassroots program to raise girls, so we deal mainly with girls because we are girls team okay uh, but we partner with abacod who takes care of the boys side but for us it's mainly the girls so we plan on um, raising these girls having them at the under 14 level and the under 16 level and just having a good flow and um, right now basketball is providing a lot of scholarships actually studying opportunities so if you can get these girls in a position whereby they can get themselves scholarships not only in uganda but even out there internationally, okay, that would be a very good thing for us because we would have achieved uh, one of the goals that we want. It's not only about to get them to play for us in the league, okay, we want them to develop as players. The other plan is we also want them to develop as girls, all right. I believe that the girl child, not only in Uganda but in Africa, have a lot of issues. You have girls who are not studying. You know, you have girls who are told that, you know, sports is not for them. It will never take them anywhere. You have girls who have low self-esteem. You have girls who have totally no confidence, you know, because the system is working against them. All right. So it's one of our goals and one of our plans to deal with those problems. You know, let girls know that, you know what, you are worth it. You can play sports. You know, you can get scholarships. You can be confident, you know, as who you are. You can live your best life. And for us, we're doing it through basketball. Mm -hmm. All right. So we go for a couple of outreaches. There's a, a guy in uh, Kawempe. He's called Ken of Holy Street Ministries. All right. So 
couple of times you go over and just you know try to work with these girls when they are there you know trying to build up his team also so we go way beyond our own girls and we try to develop other girls yeah other plans uh, basically just want to set up a system whereby we're one of the best teams at player development yeah. all right we want other teams to learn from us right now we look at other teams and you know we pick a few things here and there but we want other teams to look at us and say you know what we want to play like angels all right we want to be noticed outside uganda also all right we want you know when you look when you look into uganda right now you see city oil basically that yeah. uganda is equals to city oil all right so we want some time for uganda to be looked at as in terms of angels also right now it's jpl i hope you're not stealing symbols <laughs> <laughs> when you learn from great people, you become great. <laughs> okay, that's it. Anyway, away from your coaching career, I'm sure it's going to be really successful. Yeah. Let's get personal. As a basketball player, I want to ask you. Yeah. Who is your toughest opponent as a basketball coach, both offensively and defensively? Toughest opponent. I would say for me, it was Caesar. Because when we went to India, um, me and Caesar almost played the same position. So I remember we literally used to fight on the basketball court. If I got a basket on Caesar, he's coming back to get a basket on me. And if you'd watch us during practice sessions, you'd think we hate each other. Okay? Because we're knocking each other, punching each other, you know. I wouldn't want Caesar to be better than me. He also wouldn't, you know, want uh, me to be better than him. So it was really tough playing against him because, first of all, he's... A big guy, strong guy. And I was way smaller, way weaker. Muscle yeah, muscle man. I was smaller and weaker. So I was like, you know, I'd have to find a way to beat this guy at his own game. You know, I can't beat him strength wise, so I have to think. You know, so he made me think a lot. All right. So playing against him was really good. Offensively, I'll again say Mark Kiddy because I spent mo- most of my time with those guys. You know, they call him Max Skills. Yeah. You know, when he gets you on a crossover, yeah. <laughs> You have to pray that you don't drop, okay? So just playing against Mark, you know that you know what? Eh? I'm getting into this, well, let me go strong. but let me go strong. <laughs> if he drops me, it's cool, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but other guys, Jimmy and Abu, you know, mm-hmm. very good player. It's very, it's very hard to guard that guy, you know. When I, I, I don't know if it's only me, but I think Jimmy watched a lot of Michael Jordan, and when you look at some aspects of his game. You can see kind of Michael Jordan play. Yeah. All right. Then uh, other guys, I remember when I was young, played against Malinga. That was impossible. I couldn't beat Malinga. Henry, Henry. Henry. <laughs> it was impossible. <laughs> and because I was tall, sometimes, you know, you find yourself in the post with him. Go and you can't do anything, yeah. you know. Yeah, so those players. Mm. Uh, what's your go-to move on the basketball court? My go-to move. I have, a, I have very many moves. But I think I like right now i just like a short hesitation once you buy that it's done to the bus. crossing over going to the basket or i'm stepping back and taking the shot so right now i rely so much on the hesitation yeah i think it's a very good move okay. then uh, your inspiration when it comes to basketball my inspiration when it comes to basketball here or i don't know anything generally yeah. um yeah I, I this is going to sound cliche because, you know, for all basketballers, yeah. but Michael Jordan, right? Yeah, of when I watched Michael Jordan playing, it's like art in motion. That guy had beautiful basket, <laughs> you know? And the attitude he carried on the court was also something that was just special. Yeah. You know, so like any other basket uh, basketballer out there, I grew up wanting to be like Mike, you know, trying to copy his move. At some time, I played with my tongue out because Jordan played with his tongue out, you know? And um, back here, I think one of the players that I really looked up to was Sam Ball. Okay. Of course, it has to be a ball. Yeah, it has to be a ball. You said a ball three times. <laughs> yeah, because um, he really took me under his wing, so to say. You know, he taught me a lot of things when it came to basketball. Okay, and a lot of things when it came to coaching and just life in general. Yeah. Okay. So even if you know I've said his name name ten times, it's because I learned a lot from him. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, he also has that attitude. If you're played against him on court, you know, he has that American thing about him and whatnot. 
I didn't know why she gave players like you know what I think I should be like this guy also yeah so yeah those two guys I think. okay then uh, do you have an NBA all time five yeah man there are a lot of good players Just in the NBA five. I want you to be five. like you want current five or old five time, of way back to old time with a carry to ah that's gonna be a hard one um one obviously Michael Jordan has to be on that team okay all right um and I think I'll take Shaquille O'Neal Okay. You know, for his power, yeah. And then um, I'm taking Steph Curry, okay. you know, because I need a shooter. Yeah. That guy can shoot the lights out. So Michael Jordan, Steph Curry, Shaquille O'Neal. Then um, I'm taking Magic Johnson, all right, because okay. I really loved watching uh, that guy and what he used to do. And um, the fifth spot, that's a hard one. That's a very hard one. I know if I don't say LeBron, some LeBron haters are going to some LeBron lovers are going to hate on me. But um I think I'll take Kobe. Yeah. yeah I'll take Kobe Bryant. Yeah, I think that's a perfect spot. <laughs> yeah, because what your mom? <laughs> like I think that's a good part. Yeah. Then uh, let's get to part. your NBL all time. NBL. Please don't, don't say some of them. <laughs> Fine. Um, okay, number one. Please include him. Include and Abu? No, no, both. Please include him. Um, NBL. First of all, Malinga. Henry. Okay. Okay. The guy's like a genius at the post. His footwork was... I think he is still a genius. Yeah, still. I remember during one of the practice sessions at, at JKL, he decided to play. But he was schooling the big men. You know, I was like, okay, this guy still has it. Yeah. So, uh, him. That's one. Then, um, obviously, Enabu, Jimmy. Okay. I think the, all the Enabu brothers are really good. Uh, but for me, Jimmy uh, takes a part of all these other brothers of his and, you yes. know, put it into one. So you have Jimmy, you have I the other Enabus. Yeah. yeah, so that's uh, two so far. Then Omoy, Steve. Yeah. All right. And uh, the thing is now with Steve... Steve is like Mr. Uganda, yeah. Mr. Uganda basketball, actually. All right, not to include Steve would be like not to include Michael Jordan. All right, so I'd put Steve there. Uh, so we have uh, Malinga, Steve, then Enabu, uh -huh. then I'd put Tony Drillab on that team. Okay, so I think you're done. Those are four. No, you you got the fifth. <laughs> Those are four, and yeah, some of both. Of course. Hmm. Okay, like. What's in what, what does your normal workout routine look like? Like on a given day? On a given day, um I usually get up by six, right? Because I know that I have other things to do in the day. So I jog up to the main ground that is in Makere. So there's this really nice hill that you know I try to conquer every day and just go to the court. But that was before Corona anyways. And um my workout would start with shooting. Because I believe that Shooting is a part of the Ugandan game that we don't concentrate so much on. All right, so we need to develop shooters, and I decided for myself that you know what, I'm going to be a shooter. So I start with my shots. I start basic, you know, really basic. Go under the hoop and do form shooting. You know, get your shots up, then you know progress till you get to the three point line. I think by then the shot would be really good. You know, then I do shooting around from the inside. You know, close range, mid range. And you know, outside on the three point line. After that, I get to you know, working on my handles because I'm, I'm a bigger guy, and most people would think I actually should be playing you know, in the post, you know. But I grew up as a guard, you know, so I still need to work on my handles because you're going against either guys who are shorter than you or guys who are your same height and are also good, right? So I work so much on my handles. After that, I work on a couple of moves. There are moves that I know that I can do even if I just walk up. So I strengthen those moves and then I try to learn other moves. And the way I do it, I watch what other guys are doing in the league. And I'm like, you know what, if I use a move like this, I should be able to beat this guy, you know. So I try to work on those moves. And um, I ended up with basically strength and conditioning. I don't want to start with strength and conditioning because then I'll get tired. So that's like the, uh, the end of what I do. Yeah. Okay, so... 
how you keeping fit during this period? Because I, I don't believe you're doing what you told me. <laughs> no, right now um, the courts are closed. And you know what made it worse was that the season was cancelled. Yeah. All right. And um, right now what I do basically when I wake up in the morning, I do body weight exercises. So you have your push-ups, you have your squats, you know, you have all these other, other exercises. And I make sure it's a point. You know, I have to be disciplined and say, you know what, when I wake up, this is the workout routine that I'm going to do. And I make sure that I stick to it because just one day of falling short, even the next day you might fall short and you realize you're in a cycle now, you've created a habit. So I try and do it every day, but I rest on the weekend. So Saturday, Sunday, I basically don't do much. Maybe I do some stretching and whatnot. So that's what I do in the morning. In the evening, I'm fortunate enough to have a ball. And I have some space on the compound. And so I do my ball handling. I have no hoop. So the shooting I do mainly is just, you know, just to get, you know, keep the shot alive. So I do some ball handling, some shooting. And then sometimes in the night, I watch a couple of games just to read, you know, to develop myself as a player and also as a coach, you know, because for me now it's twofold. I watch games so that I can learn how to coach the girls and also how to make myself better. Yeah. Okay. So how influential are your parents towards the development of your basket? <laughs> my parents, I remember at some point, my parents banned me from playing basket. Yeah. They had this thing of, you know what, you're not concentrating on your books because of what? Basketball. Because it was always basketball. Wake up in the morning, basketball. Come home for lunch, basketball. So they told me, if you ever go back and play that game, you're going to be in trouble. So at a certain point, I was actually playing the game secretly. All right, but I, I realized that you know what, these people want me to be very good at my books. So supposing I was good at the books and still playing the same basketball, what would happen? All right, so I decided to study. So my books actually went up, and you know, I continued playing basketball secretly. But one day, I think my mom read my name in the newspaper, and she was happy. You know, she's like, you know what, I didn't even know you were playing, but you know, your name is here. Keep going, you know, keep going. So she, my mom is a, a very prayerful person. And I think she used to pray for me a lot and, you know, tell me that, you know what, maybe one day we'll see you on TV playing. And, you know, as growing up, that really motivated me to continue playing basketball. You know, even up to now, for every trophy that I get, every medal that I get, I don't hang it up in my room. I take it and give it to my mom and tell her, you know what, here is the trophy. Yes, the medal, you know, just as a thank you because you pushed me and actually allowed me to play this game. Because they used to buy me shoes, you know, buy me basketballs, buy me, you know, uh, stuff to use, like the uniforms to use and all that. And they realized that, you know, what, this kid, this kid can actually do something with this game, you know. So I give it back to them uh, just, just to appreciate, you know, them for pushing me. And even up to now, there's sometimes my mom who look at me sitting and she's like, what, you're not going to play today? You know, so till now, they are very instrumental. They push me, all right? Okay. Not not only because of basketball, but just watching what my parents do for us, you know, pushes me on the court. I'm like, if my mom can do all these things, if I'm on the court, I'm also going to give 100%, you know, like she does. Okay. Yeah. So this has been a tradition. You know what we're going through right now. Yeah. Corona is everywhere in the world. But uh, in Uganda, people are not really dying. And uh, you know how Ugandans are, if you yeah. don't really see something, you don't believe. <laughs> True. I want you to just like, look at the camera and advise people how All to right. stay safe. Okay. Yeah. Um, hello, my name is Atang Emmanuel once again. Um, all of you know that we're going through a period of uh, coronavirus and it's a pandemic. And um, we need to protect ourselves. First of all, protect yourself and also protect everyone around you starts with your family then goes out to your neighborhood and then goes out to the country as a whole so the government has given us sops that we need to follow all right very basic things like wash your hands i mean it doesn't take any rocket science for you to wash your hands you know you need to sanitize okay sanitize is not that expensive you can buy one whole bottle for your family when visitors come they use the same if that is expensive get some soap and make sure you wash your hands like every 20 minutes Okay, apart from that, I believe that uh, whether the government has given you uh, face masks or not, make it a point to not only buy your face mask, but wear the face mask. It 
makes no sense for you to have something that you're not using, all right? And um, as most of you should realize that this disease is spread through close contact. So we're always going to be close to certain people. And most of us think that, oh, because this person is my friend, you know, this person lives in my neighborhood, they cannot carry this virus. All of us are potential carriers of this virus. So let's use our face masks and protect each other. Okay, and finally, let's pray. I'm a guy who believes in prayer, and I believe that when we pray, it changes a nation. All right, let's pray to God for wisdom on our part, and also wisdom on the part of the government, so that they can uh, have the wisdom to give us whatever we need. Be safe, keep your family safe, keep your neighborhood safe, and I believe that at a certain point, we'll be able to kick uh, Corona out of Uganda, and also have basketball back, because I know that's what we're all waiting for. Yeah. Okay, then lastly, I want you to look at the camera once again. You're caught yeah. very influential in the league. I wish you would look into the camera once again and advise the young ones out there, those who want to play yeah. basketball. Okay, um, for the young ones out there, let me say this first. The time we were playing basketball, the time we were learning how to play basketball, we didn't have all the facilities, all the resources, and all the opportunities that you guys have now, Okay. And we didn't take things for granted at that time. Whenever we had an opportunity to learn something, to go on a basketball court, we did the best that we could. Right now, you guys are so blessed to have, you know, resources, facilities. You have the internet. You can literally learn anything on the internet. You have all these programs with the NBA coming up. So from me to you, use the opportunities when they are still there, okay? Because... Time passes. We look at time and we think, you know what, uh, I'll get better tomorrow, I'll get better next year. You have to realize that your competition is not only you, you're competing against the guys in the States, you're competing against guys in Kenya, and those guys are really working out. Okay, So make sure you work out. Make sure you learn from the best. These days, you have coaches. You have asked the coaches, you have other players that you can learn from. Okay, so Don't be shy, don't be proud. You know, go ask someone about basketball, go to the internet, learn all that you can, right? Because basketball can take you places. Basketball is like a vehicle that can take you to the NBA. It can take you to the White House. It can take you to the president's, you know, presence. So learn whatever you can right now. Use whatever resources that you have and ask for guidance. Don't think you know it all, okay? Ask for guidance. And I believe that when you do those simple things, Basketball will become easier. Basketball will become enjoyable. And the last thing I would say is keep up the name of basketball. You know, don't only learn one aspect. These days you have people learning how to shoot threes because of, you know, Steph Curry. And that's the only thing he can do. Someone is crossing over but can't finish. You know, don't get so hyped about the highlights that you see in the NBA because. They never show you how much work those guys are putting in. I wish they would show you how much work those guys put in each and every day. Stop looking at highlights. Start looking for videos where they show you what those guys are doing to get there. Those guys work out, I think, for a whole week just to play a 40-minute game. So if you're not doing the same, big problem. But we have very much, but guys have to get serious about it. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, thank you so much.